hi guys welcome back to my channel welcome if you are new today i will be doing day two of the basket business course guys but before i begin guys i would like to announce the winner of the raffle for the first class the winner is kok party favors so kok party favors if you're watching um please um submit your information to me so i can send off your box okay so now let's get into the video okay so today we will be talking about um where to sell your baskets um also we'll be talking about setup okay and thirdly we'll be talking about um you know getting into the gist of it and actually being out there and you know selling okay so first of all um i hope everyone's having a good day a good morning i am so let's get into it so um where to sell your baskets that's really really key okay um location is key just because you want to um, attract uh, as many customers as you possibly can and also you want a location where um, you know that uh, people will be coming um, on a daily basis okay so yeah so uh, selling on the streets is very very effective when it comes to holidays because holidays are not every day so um, you actually being out there selling on the streets you know lets everyone know like hey you know it's a holiday and um, come and see what I have okay so as far as location in your area everyone has um, lives in different areas they have different um, locations but um, try to find an area where you know that uh, people like to shop. Like if there's a, a Chinese store or a busy uh, store that everyone is always going to, try to get as close as possible to that area as you can um, so that you can acquire those customers also. And also guys, um, what I've noticed in selling um, on the streets is that when I go to areas that are a, a little bit more urban, a little bit more fast paced with people moving around constantly, those are my biggest selling areas, okay? When I first started selling baskets about three and a half years ago, four years almost, um, I started off at um, a flea market, okay? I didn't necessarily go inside the flea market, but I started um, on a flea market property, okay? I started selling there. It was okay, but what I noticed uh, with selling there is that because the flea market was there and there was a lot of things going on on the outside that was not selling related, um, it kind of deterred customers. Customers were confused whether I was selling uh, plants or basket. They weren't really sure, so I didn't get a lot of stops, okay? But I, I did make some sales, but not a lot of stops. So be sure to get a location that is not um, distractive to what you're selling, okay? Um, and again, okay, selling on the streets. Uh, find a spot where you can where you can get the owner's permission or an empty lot um, that you can maybe uh, contact the owner and ask them, you know, can you post there or um, just, you know, um, ask the business that um, would allow you to stand up in front of their store. Now, some people won't charge, but some people will. I know that when I first started off selling in front of the flea market, um, you know, they charged me $15 a day, which was nothing, but, you know, some places will charge more or less. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. So you have to check with your area and who you're going to be asking, okay? So, um, yeah, some locations, they charge. But um, also what you need to do is um, look to see if your city um, requires that you have a permit, okay? Although I got permission from uh, the flea market to sell in front of their business, I also called the city and asked them, did I need a permit for my city? I'm in Florida. So I was told that I didn't need a permit as long as I had permission from the owner to be there. So every city is different. You want to look into it. Even if your city requires a permit, you will know if your city is not um, really adamant about getting a permit that they would just allow you to, you know, sell just for the holidays and then no more than that, okay? So ask the city, um, but most likely um, if you ask the owner, a lot of times, you know, it'll just look like, you know, 
the owners selling the baskets and you know maybe i don't know don't quote me the city might not ask you for a permit so check with your local um city hall office okay all right so yes okay so um i right now i'm currently selling in an open field okay which i like because there is nothing else around there's no distraction um, and I know if you turn into the field, you're either coming to me or the barbecue stand. So, you know, I know that you're not going to go up to the business or anything like that. So, yeah, guys, location is key. Make sure your location is, you know, good to go. You can um, kind of set up, uh, not set up, but you can kind of test your location and see if it's a good location if you just set up maybe a few baskets, okay? Um on a random day or maybe two weeks before the holiday and just see you know if someone will stop by and ask you a question or just notice and look to see if someone actually is you know stopping to look they're taking a glance they're asking questions that'll be a, a good indicator also okay guys so next um i'm going to talk about I'm looking at my notes i'm going to talk about setup Okay, so setup is very important and it helps in selling your basket and getting you noticed and getting customers to stop. Okay, so with the setup, I would strongly, strongly, without a doubt, um, you know, ask that you guys get a tent. Okay, the reason why I would strongly, strongly su suggest that you get a tent is because when you have a tent, a tent shows that something is going on over there. I have to look, turn and look to see what is that, what is that tent over there? What are they doing over there? You can just have tables with items there and people may stop by, but the tent shows that you're you're set you're set up, you're setting something up, and that you know it's important enough to have a tent. Some customers may look at you with a table and say, ah, oh, they're probably just um selling, I don't know, peanuts or fruits. Um, I'm not going over there. I, I don't need fruits. I don't need those things. But if they see a tent, they're curious to know what is going on over there. Okay. The curiosity comes out of them. Okay, guys. So a tent is a great idea to get. And this goes hand in hand with the location. You want a location also that you are able to put a tent up. If you get a location that you can't put a tent up, that may be a problem that may slow sales down. If people didn't know you from before, um, you know being in that area knowing that you're the vendor in that area so you want to get a location with a tent okay next um the location shows that um that you're professional not the location the tent shows that you're a professional and that you have some sort of you know business going on that you care enough to buy a tent okay now i've seen um tents customized with the names and different things but i have not gotten into that yet but you guys are more than welcome to look into that and maybe get your tents customized. I don't know. But the tent is important, I've noticed, okay? So when I go out and sell in the field, if I do like a pre-sale, like before the holiday, and I just come with my uh, truck and I just sell out of my truck and, you know, show my baskets, people will look, but they'll just look like, um, She's probably not selling a lot of things. She's pro she probably doesn't have a lot. She doesn't have variety. And she probably won't have a gift that I want because there's a small selection. And, you know, there's no tent indicating that there's anything more to come. Okay. The same thing with the U-Haul. But we're going to get into that later. Okay. So now with the tent, um, I would strongly suggest that when you get your tent, you get weights. You have to get weights. If you're going to be on concrete, get weights. If you're going to be out in the field with grass, it's a lot easier. You can get um, the metal little rods that go into the um, the dirt that will keep the tent down. Or you can um, do what I did maybe, uh, I think maybe two years ago. Um, another business owner helped me out. My tent was flying and she, uh, she suggested that I put, you know, water bottles. I tie water bottles up on top of the tent and it worked. And I was like, wow, that works perfectly. So you can try that, but I didn't really like the look. So I just went ahead and just, uh, I started getting the rocks, okay? But that's an option if you can't get the rocks. And um, yeah, so uh, you can get that for your tent and balloons, 
okay i always decorate my tent with a balloon with balloons and a banner on top now the banner um you can get it from timu whatever holiday is going on um you can search in if you're doing christmas merry christmas um happy valentine's day and the tent the not the tents the uh banners are fairly cheap on timu they're like three to four or five dollars the most so that will save you from buying a custom you know banner that would you know you would have to pay 60 to 65 dollars for okay but you can get into that later as you grow your business so but for now you want to look professional on a budget right so um the banner is key okay and it shows attention to detail and also the balloons what i do is I just go to the Dollar Tree and I buy like a pack of balloons and I pull them up and I just tie them at the ends because it makes it look festive and it makes it look, you know, creative, okay? And customers pay attention to that. They're looking at if you pay attention to detail, is your tent detailed? It doesn't look neat, although it's outside. They pay attention to everything, okay? So if your tent looks like something's going on, you know, uh, it's pulling, it's drawing customers, it has colors, it has balloons, then they would actually approach your tent, you know, with the mindset of, okay, this person may have variety and um, be very diverse, okay? So that's what you want for the customer. You don't want the customer to drive by and say, oh, that's just another tent down the road. Um, I don't know, she's selling out of her trunk or, uh, yeah, she has a tent up, but um, it doesn't look like anything, so I'm not gonna go there, okay? You don't want that. So yeah, um, decorating the tent is key. And also tablecloths, um, whichever your preference is. I always go with the theme. Um, sometimes I roll over themes. Um, if the colors still you know, match, I'll just use that. But the tablecloths are nice just because it covers up the white and it shows the customer that you, you are paying attention to detail and you are keeping your item nice and clear away from dirt that may be on a table by using you know, a nice tablecloth, okay? So yeah, getting um, balloons, tablecloth, and banners, all right? Also guys, um, tables. You're gonna need tables. Um, I would suggest starting with three tables, okay? Um, they sell the tables at Walmart, so you can either order them from walmart.com or you can just go to Walmart. They range from 45 to $50. I know that I've seen the white um, foldable tables, I'm gonna put it right here, at um, Dollar General. And um, I think I've seen them for maybe you know, $39, $40, something like that. But you can either check your Dollar General. Um, sometimes they may have them, but Walmart for sure will have them. And I suggest starting with three tables, guys. Okay, and um, Next, I'm gonna talk about, I'm looking at my notes here so I won't forget, so I won't skip anything, okay? Um, getting a U-Haul, yes. Getting a U-Haul is also key, okay? Yes, you're spending the money to get the U-Haul. It's only $20, $19.99 plus the miles. But if you're selling down the road or you're just using a U-Haul for um, you know, your business, then you shouldn't be running up a lot of miles anyway. You know, your bill shouldn't be no more than, I don't know, $30 a day, and that's it, you know, for the U-Haul. Also, the U-Haul, um, what I've noticed is that when I'm out there with my truck, clients still come, customers still come, but I notice that when I have a U-Haul, it shows that I have a variety, of influx of baskets, because the U-Haul makes it seem like, you know, I have too many things, too many baskets here, so I need to haul, you know, all these baskets in this U-Haul. So it puts in a customer's mind like, oh my gosh, they have so many baskets. Let's go over there. We're going to find something. They have a lot, okay? I remember my husband's friend coming over uh, to buy a basket this uh, Mother's Day, and um, I think he remembered us from, uh, was it? I think Valentine's Day, yeah. We had a U-Haul. So he came out there to purchase, and then he said, um, and I didn't think it was nothing. He said, um, oh, uh, why didn't you guys get the U-Haul? Um, and I looked at him like, <laughs> people really, you know, noticed that. And by him mentioning that, it, it, it gave me information, more information on feedback on how customers perceive your business, okay? So the U-Haul helped attract customers because it looked like we had an influx of baskets. 
So, um, you know, I took that into account and I said, okay, that's another strategy to use. So, guys, a U-Haul is important. It's great for advertising and it'll make your setup look uh, professional. And also, if someone didn't know you and that was the first time they saw you there, at least they would know that you have your head on your shoulders, that you have a U-Haul, you know what you're doing, you have a lot of items, so come on in by. They, they, they don't have to know that you just started yesterday, okay? <laughs> All right, so also um have your cash app qr code posted if you go into your cash app um account um there is an option for a qr code i'm going to post it here so you can see how it looks okay and with that code um the customer could just scan it and then when they scan it it'll show them a payment link where they can just go ahead and pay you and um, with the QR code, you can either buy a plastic sleeve from Staples and put it in there and then maybe tape it on your table or on your tent, or you can have Staples laminated, okay? I think it's still $5 to laminate, you know, one sheet of paper. So, you know, so it could be uh, waterproof and you can always have it and it won't rip up or nothing like that. And then also, um, you can, uh, if you have an Instagram, you can post your Instagram uh, QR code um, on the table or on the tent. Okay, guys? And that's very important because someone will say, well, why would I have an Instagram? Just in case someone um, is asking about other services that you do, you can say, oh, yeah, I do a, a whole bunch of other services. You can scan a code right now and they'll scan it and look at it and say, oh, my God, yeah, that's nice. You do party favors, powder. Oh, you do decorating. That's nice. Okay, so I see it here. And then also, you can encourage them, you know, to follow you on, on Instagram while you're out there. You can gain more followers, okay? And then also, if they purchase from you, that's a customer that will always see what you have in stock and what you're working on if you post, you know, consistently on Instagram, okay? I have an Instagram and I use the same technique. I had a customer come, you know, um, to buy a basket. And when she saw my Instagram, she was like, oh, you have Instagram? I said, yes, I do other uh, services. I can do, you know, cakes and uh, cupcakes and things like that. And she was inquiring about graduation. So I gave her the Instagram. So now I don't even have to call her to let her know what I'm doing. She can just check my Instagram and see what I'm posting and communicate with me and, and possibly, you know, put her order in you know for that graduation okay and also the cell phone number um you want to have that posted there i mean having everything posted and looking set up because it gives the customer more um confidence and um will hold you more you know accountable and will trust you because they see that you're set up there's no questions asked there's no you know can i get a lower price no this is official business is you, do you see the setup it's official these baskets are official okay all right so the last thing we're going to talk about is getting into actually selling out there um getting out there and selling um is you as a basket maker solving the problem okay what is the problem most likely when you're selling on the streets or selling outside it's for people who one don't have time to go into a store and stand in the line okay two people who are just getting off of work <laughs> and don't have time to drive to the store okay and three people who are just last minute or either they forgot that the holiday was even coming up okay you just saved them you solved the problem last minute okay just like fast food before they had fast food you had to wait for a meal you had to go to a restaurant and sit down and wait but now Burger King McDonald's they solved the problem of uh you know long waits fast food okay fast baskets okay fast gift <laughs> all right so um so yeah you're solving a problem when you're selling out on the streets um selling the baskets and also um being out there um what I used to do, um, I used to start like maybe a day or two, but what I've learned is that starting a week before, it's not going to hurt, or maybe a week and a half, it's not going to hurt just because it's just basically advertising. If you sell a basket, that's fine. If you sell another service that you're offering, that's fine too, okay? Two for one. So it's not bad to go out there if you have a couple hours a day to go and set up a week prior to the holiday okay it rounds up the customers and it makes it it's like a billboard okay you're there 
your shop is the billboard so when they drive by they're like oh okay i see the basket stand there i can come back um, on Valentine's Day and buy some baskets because she'll always be there. And always being there shows that you're consistent and that customers can rely on you. Okay, if you're not there most of the time, then they're going to be like, you know what, I'm going to just keep, you know, Walmart in my back pocket because, you know, she might not be there. Okay, so being reliable and consistent is important. All right, so, um, so dues, okay, bring out a few noticeable items, okay. A few of your best looking items bring a few out on the days that you're advertising um, leading up to the holiday okay don't don't bring baskets out that may contain items that will melt or get sticky okay that is key because you're gonna ruin your basket and then you're gonna have to um, end up you know doing it over okay um, I know some people um, live up north. I live in Florida. I have that problem with the sun and stickiness. But even up north, your your baskets can get damaged because, yes, it's, it may be cool, but sometimes the sun, if the sun is out and it's reflecting on your basket, it can also melt it too. It can melt the candle. Yeah, guys, talking about melting. So, yeah, you want to bring out baskets that are durable, um, that do not have um, items that are sensitive to heat um, when you're pre-selling because those are basically going to be the baskets that you will be bringing out every day. So you want to bring out baskets that won't easily get, um, you know, uh, destroyed or damaged, okay? So, yeah, guys. Um, also, I'm going to say that uh, do take custom orders. Um just because, um, you know, you should be done making the baskets that you already made. So um, taking a custom order, you know, it wouldn't be too much because this is a basket that you're making that you know that you want to sell, okay? So what I would suggest in taking um, a custom order is to take uh, at least a 50% um, discount, not discount, a 50% deposit, okay? Why a deposit? Because it ensures that the customer will come back because they've paid. And also, if whatever they're asking for, you don't have it, at least you have some of the money up front to go ahead and get it. So I would suggest getting um, a deposit from them to ensure that you will find all the items that they're looking for and you know just make them a basket, okay? So basically, guys, um, Getting set up and um, accommodating people while you're out there requires for you to be there early and requires for you to be there sometimes late, okay? So early, meaning um, if you're pre-selling or if it's the day of the holiday and people are rushing to work, there's no time to go to the store. Oh my God, I forgot that it was Valentine's Day. I forgot that it was Christmas. Uh, you can literally be out there um, hours before they go to work, which would be uh, six, seven o'clock in the morning or school, because uh, some parents do buy uh, gifts for their teachers and stuff. So you wanna be out there um, a little early. And then for the people that are at work who, you know, getting off of work, can't go to Walmart, don't wanna go stand in a line anymore and just wanna grab something and go, you can just be out there um, after work. Typically, people work from nine to five, so six, seven, maybe eight. If you still have some sunlight or some type of lighting outside, or you're around somewhere, you know, where it's lit or there's a lot of people around for your safety. Okay, guys, so I would suggest doing that to accommodate the customer and to maximize your profit. Okay, so any business and every business literally solves a problem. Okay, so the problem that you're solving is uh, convenience. Um, I forgot, okay? And also, um, the other problem that you're solving is that um, the customer literally doesn't have to uh, think about the gift. It's already made up already. They don't have to go and 
to your store and try to pick out a card a, uh, the perfect present and the perfect gift bag is already wrapped up so yeah guys i'm gonna stop right here i hope you guys learned a lot although i gave a lot of gems in this video there will there will be more gems in the actual course which you can check out at premium gift basket designs i will leave the link in the description guys guys i hope you guys have a great day see you on the next video bye